I'm Larry Dickerson. I'm a falconer here in North Carolina and currently I'm the president of the North American Falconers Association and a past president of the North Carolina Falconers Guild. Right now I'm flying a red tail. Last year I flew Gossaw and um, have flown Coopers, Harris, red tail and a few others that we won't get into. But I've been a falconer for almost 20 years. What is telemetry? Telemetry actually is a system, um, almost like tethering is a system. Uh, telemetry in its briefest form uh, it combines an antenna, a transmitter, a receiver, and an antenna. And the transmitter is what goes on the bird, the receiver is what you use to pick up the signal. I won't say it's really important for every falconer. Um, it depends on the type of bird you're flying, the circumstances that you're flying in, but it certainly uh, is, in my opinion, critical you know, for exhibitors and for people who fly long wings, the falcons. Uh, for a red tail or a harris, maybe not, you know, because those birds are often flying close in and you pretty much have an eye on them, but not always. But again, that's an individual falconer's opinion and that's an individual falconer's taste. If you prefer to put telemetry on your bird, by all means, do it. I think really every time that I have ever flown an exhibitor or a falcon, um, I've had to use telemetry. And it's one of those situations where you know, here in North Carolina, we, we have a different terrain than you have out west. And in other areas, you know, they're wide open areas. You can actually see the bird for literally miles with a pair of binoculars. Here, you can't really see more than 15 or 20 feet inside the woods, so you really don't know. Exhibitors, uh, their natural way of behaving is actually to go find, whenever they catch something, is to go find the most dense cover they can and drag their prey into that. You know, the falcons, a lot of times you won't see them disappear over the hill, so you really don't know where they are and you're going to have to go find them. And to me, every time that you have to go find a bird, you're saving that bird. I've known numerous instances, even though it hasn't happened to me, I've known numerous falconers who have had birds that have gone down on prey and they haven't been able to locate the bird quickly and when they did, there was a red tail or a golden eagle eating their bird. So every single time, you can almost imagine what can happen if you don't locate your bird quickly and telemetry helps you do that. What we're going to talk about right now is the receiver part. This particular receiver is from FL Electronics. It's a little bit older receiver. And even though it is still on the market, uh, you will see a lot of these, uh, particularly at Falconry Meets. You will see a lot of falconers use this, mostly because it's, it's what they have. Um, telemetry, unless you just are really abuse it, you know, it, it will last you a lifetime. And this particular model, uh, has been used now for over 20 years. Very effective. Probably of, of those that you're going to see is probably the most affordable for everyone. This is a Marshall uh, receiver and antenna combination. Uh, this is a Marshall 100 and uh, a little older model uh, of the Marshall but again still works perfectly well and uh, obviously the, the bottom part of this is the receiver and the top part is the Yagi antenna. This is a newer uh, Marshall uh, receiver and Yagi combination. This is the model 800 and with this one it's a, a simple push and to open the, the antenna and that's really a little smaller, a little more compact, uh, more frequencies and as you can tell with electronics it's, it's continual progression and improvement with telemetry uh, in this country and that's one of the big things and one of the big improvements in the United States and one of the big things that American falconers have contributed to falconry worldwide is the use of electronics and telemetry. Let's talk about what is a receiver and its, its purpose. As we mentioned earlier, the bottom part of this, and this again happens to be the Marshall 800, and your receiver may be different and you may have different knobs and you may have different dials but what we're going to try to do is, is take you through the very basics of what each one does. The bottom part here is the receiver 
And in this particular case, over on the left side, this particular knob is a volume knob. It also serves as the opportunity for you to turn it on, power on, power off. So turning on the, the receiver is a very simple thing just by turning it on. And then you can see all the LED indicators down there as well. The next knob over here is a fine tune. And not every transmitter is tuned exactly to the frequency. So you may have to fine tune that and that's actually done with the receiver and that's through this particular knob here. Now over on to the right side is probably one of the more important things that you can actually use and that's going to be the meter. The meter is going to tell you the signal strength and all transmitters and all receivers are going to emit a tone. The receiver obviously is going to pick up the tone but sometimes listening to that particular beep is not always the thing that you want to do. You always want to pay attention more closely even to your meter than you do to the actual noise that's out there because the meter will actually give you the total signal strength. The rest of the buttons that you see on here are actually the how to tune the frequency. That's down here at the very bottom. Uh, in this particular case it is set on 216 and if you look here on it it's set at 025. 025216.025 is the actual frequency of the transmitter that we're going to be looking for. Remember, this is only the receiver part. It's not the transmitter part. The top on, on the top is the Aggie antenna, and that's how this particular system is built. As you saw on the other systems, they're slightly different, but all of them are having an, an antenna and a receiver as one unit. It doesn't always have to be that way. A receiver can be separate from the antenna itself. This is the transmitter part of the telemetry system. This is what would go on your bird. In this particular case, this one particular transmitter is actually set up as a leg mount transmitter. On the very end of it is what would be called the barrel or the battery barrel. And the lower part here actually is the transmitter itself and down this particular side is the antenna and in the transmitter itself this is where you're receiving or hopefully will receive your signal from and this is a, a vital part of it when you're checking your system always make sure before you get ready to fly that you check your receiver that you're receiving signal from the uh, the transmitter itself and let me show you now again on with the battery it's a very simple thing with this particular transmitter is just simply open up the transmitter. It won't have the battery in it and you can actually take the battery, put it inside and then simply screw it back on. Now we're going to talk a little bit about how to use the receiver and the transmitter in combination with a telemetry system. And I, I think, you know, first of all, you know, we talked a little bit about the receiver how to turn the receiver on. We talked a little bit about the transmitter, how to make sure that your battery is in there, and then how to, to actually test it. And before you put the bird up, and after you've got everything hooked up, the, the bird's got its telemetry on, always make sure that you test your system and make sure that you're receiving an appropriate signal. And you may be able to actually hear the beep a little bit on the, uh, the video, and you're actually now listening to the receivers picking up the, the signal from the transmitter. And you may hear it fade, you may hear it actually go up and down. That's because our partner out here who's going to be working with the transmitter is putting it behind his back and he's putting it in his pocket and he's generally messing with us right now. But the other thing that I want to make sure that you do understand and understand a little bit more if this is your first time dealing with telemetry is by all means read the book. The book will explain telemetry a little bit more, it will explain some techniques that are best for you to use, particularly if you're actually using telemetry for the first time. Now understand that your terrain and how you will actually be using this system is going to depend largely on you, it's going to depend on practice, and it's going to depend on your, your terrain and what you've got to work with and where your bird might be. So now we're going to go into how to find your bird. In preparation for this little exercise is I've actually put a piece of, of tape, bright yellow tape, on this because when we go and hide it in the woods and uh, my assistant's going to go hide this and we're going to find it and just putting the tape on there and it doesn't have to be yellow or anything like that. It can be any bright color and this is just to help you find it later on. 
Okay, so Larry has returned to his house and he's left us. And while he is away, I'm going to be hiding this transmitter somewhere in the woods around this pond. And when he returns, he's going to show us how to find this transmitter and hopefully find it. So what we're going to try to do is, is find our lost bird. Now, obviously, we don't have the transmitter on a bird. Um, my assistant has taken the transmitter out and hidden the transmitter. We didn't cheat. I didn't actually look where it was put. So we're going to try to find the signal. We're going to assume that we have no idea uh, where this bird is or actually where the transmitter is. So we're simply going to turn on and listen for signal. Now obviously you can hear we're getting a really good signal and I'm on the longest range that I can possibly be on. So this is telling me right now that this transmitter is very, very close. So what I'm going to do is actually just turn it down a little bit into a medium range and then I'm going to try to use a medium range to see if I can locate it. Now there are a couple of different ways to actually hold your receiver. and Some people will actually use the receiver pointing straight ahead and they'll use a sweep motion. And what you want to try to do whenever you're looking for a particular transmitter, you don't have any idea where the bird is, is simply use a sweeping motion of 360 degrees. 360 degrees means you're going to turn all the way around. And you can keep the transmitter, and uh, or not the transmitter, but the receiver flat and just do a sweep and try and get your signal as best you can. One of the difficult things that we're doing today is actually using a transmitter and receiver, a telemetry system, around water. Water is reflective of radio signals and you can actually hear as we're changing the direction of our antenna how the sound is changing. And one of the things that you may or may not want to do is, is you want to look at the meter. Uh, and the meter, of course, as we explained to you earlier, is really right here in front of you. And look at the differences in the signal strength. Now, around water, signal can easily bounce. So keep in mind that you may want to turn your receiver system in more of a vertical way rather than a horizontal. So you may want to go vertical around water or around metal buildings and actually see if you can't point to that just a little bit more. So you can actually see that using this and using it in a different plane is actually picking up a different tone. And I'm seeing that same result on my meter. Now I'm looking at the meter, you're listening to tone. So let's go find a, a bird, a transmitter. transmitter antenna is an omnidirectional antenna. Omni meaning all the way around, 360 degrees. So it's actually sending out tones 360 degrees from around the transmitter itself and the antenna. And if you can imagine a, a, a donut uh, and in the middle of that hole and it's spreading out from the middle of that hole in all directions with the same strength. And that's, that's really the way the transmitter works. How this works, this is a directional antenna. So what you're doing is you're trying to focus in on the strongest signal from that part of the antenna coming from the transmitter. You're focusing in on that with your receiver. This particular receiver has the ability to set a range. Now, not all receivers have this, but this particular one does. What I always try to do is start out with the highest range possible and in this particular case this is this is your range button right here and it has a high, medium and low range. High would be where I'm going to start. You know I, I want to get signal. That's my first thing that I want to do is make sure I get a signal. And as I get closer uh, to the, the transmitter which hopefully is still attached to the bird then I'm going to reduce my range to medium and I'm going to work my signal that way and then eventually I'm going to go all the way down uh, to low. And some of the, the toughest things that you can do, particularly in thick, thick cover, when you're looking for a bird, is getting exactly on the bird itself. And sometimes you may be within just a matter of a few feet and that bird sits absolutely still. Now, despite using telemetry and despite all the advances in using electronics this day and time, it has been a tremendous 
help in getting birds back. Um, and without it, many, many people would not have their bird back. I still use bells on my bird. I, there's something comforting about listening to that uh, sound of bells as well. So you could actually get close to a bird, disturb the bird, and hear the bell uh, even before you actually locate it with, uh, with a receiver. But um, that's what I do is actually start out with the highest range that I possibly can, get the signal, then go to medium range, and then go to low range. And that lets me know that I'm very, very close at that particular time. I'm going to take another sweep. By doing things this slow, I've got a pretty good idea which way we're headed. I'm watching my meter and I'm actually pointing my receiver down. So actually I know that in this particular case the bird would be down. In my opinion, yes. Uh, it's worth the life of a bird and getting that bird back. And it doesn't necessarily mean the cost of the bird, because often the cost of the bird is not quite as important as getting that bird back. And that's not really what you're thinking about at that particular time. So in my opinion, yes, telemetry is worth the price. Telemetry, purchasing it, I will give you opinions. Um, and it's a very generic opinion. Purchase the best you can afford. And I know that that's a very generic answer, but for some people, you know, being able to afford a transmitter that costs $200 is just not going to work for them. So get the best you can with what you can afford. My suggestion would be to buy your telemetry from a reputable dealer uh, as well. And know what you're getting. Uh, know what you're ordering and know the types of systems that you're, you're trying to, to get. I would also look at the frequency and make sure that you're getting something that is compatible with other falconers in your area. The reason that I say that is you may need help later on. So if you buy a telemetry system that's on a 219 frequency and everyone around you has 216, they may not be able to help you. So look at what other people have before you buy it. Buy the best that you can afford and buy from a reputable dealer. I think probably if I had to, to make a recommendation for anyone using telemetry after they've purchased it is to practice, practice, practice. And practice in the area where you're going to be flying your bird. Practice in your home territory and know what you're doing before you get into the field. Because trying to, to learn telemetry and learn tracking when you've got a bird that's lost and you're trying to get it back, that's not the time to do it. So always practice beforehand and it can be a lot of fun.